There happen to be two genes, BRCA1, BRCA2, that are involved with hereditary breast and ovarian cancer. Since Angelina Jolie's mother had already passed away, I'm making the assumption that they probably decided to start testing by testing Angelina. Um, and they were able to discover that she carries an altered, also known as a mutation, in one of those genes, BRCA1 or BRCA2. And we know that when someone tests positive for that, it means they have an increased likelihood to develop breast and or ovarian cancer. So in order to minimize her risk, Angelina Jolie decided to have a prophylactic mastectomy. So she had all of the breast tissue removed in order to reduce her likelihood of developing breast cancer. Well, actually, when someone does test positive for a BRCA1 or BRCA2 mutation, um, the first level of defense is always increased surveillance. We always recommend that you start off by doing breast MRIs and mammograms, perhaps one every six months, so that we're doing some type of screening measure every six months to look for breast cancer. We believe in those screening modalities. We believe that we can catch cancer at a very early curable stage. However, there are some women, either because they have a very high likelihood of developing breast cancer or maybe have a personal experience with someone who has died of that disease, um, or perhaps they're just getting screened every six months and they're tired of going in for extra biopsies. There are some women that choose to just have the breast tissue removed before it develops into cancer. And certainly that is the best way to reduce your likelihood of developing breast cancer. And so she probably reduced her likelihood of developing breast cancer by about 90 to 95 percent um, because we can't just get everything. Uh, but the second component to being testing positive for a BRCA1 or BRCA2 mutation is that you're at risk to develop ovarian cancer as well. This is what her mother actually died of was ovarian cancer. And so her next step is going to be figuring out how to reduce her risk of developing ovarian cancer. The hardest part about reducing risk for ovarian cancer is that we don't have great recommendations for screening. Ovarian cancer doesn't have a, a magical mammogram or breast MRI that we can offer that can detect it at a very early curable stage. Usually by the time a woman is diagnosed with ovarian cancer, she's at stage three or stage four. So really the best line of defense against that disease is to remove the ovaries. The issue with removing the ovaries, however, is that that puts you into surgical menopause, which for a woman like Angelina Jolie, when your, your face and, and the way you present yourself to the world is, that is your job. Um, taking away those hormones that make you feminine and make you youthful, um, that's a big decision for her to make. And, and again, it is yet another surgery. But what we've found is that for these women who are BRCA1 or BRCA2 mutation carriers, if they take out their ovaries, they can further reduce their breast cancer risk by 50%. It's a bit of a Pandora's box. There's, there's a lot more to it than just getting a simple yes or a no. Um, like I mentioned, when we have a patient that tests negative, uh, say they have breast cancer, but they've done this BRCA testing and it comes back negative, there are numerous other cancer syndromes we would want to discuss and whether to pursue that testing. I, I, when someone tests negative, I don't want them to think that, okay, now I have a get out of jail free card, I don't ever have to have a mammogram again. That's not the case. And so it's the information that we find from, this, from gen any genetic testing in general, whether it is a positive or a negative, it can often be very, it can often be more complicated with how we interpret that result and what medical recommendations we're left with at this point. Positive, we've got a list of things we would do. A negative result, do we need to do additional testing? Do we need to just reassess the family history and try to tailor medical recommendations based on that? Um, it, it's often a more difficult conversation. Identifying the genetic culprit, if you will, in a family is very important, not just for the individual, but to know then who in the family is now at risk. Um, who in the family does need to have something like having a prophylactic mastectomy or having their ovaries removed. Um, and maybe who in the family does not. 
because if there's an individual in a family who doesn't inherit this genetic component, then they can go back to the regular screening regimen like everybody else and have a mammogram at 40 and leave their ovaries behind. They can leave them. Um, and so it's not just important for the patient. I think it's also very, very important for the rest of the family to have this information as well. Definitely, there's certainly, um, fed, there's certainly guidelines that we look at. Um, for example, if a, a woman has been diagnosed with breast cancer under 50, it's pretty routine that she'll be referred to a genetic counselor for this type of conversation and testing, perhaps. Um, but I think that even in primary care practice, physicians are starting to pay attention to that family history and look for that first or second degree relative with breast or ovarian cancer. And maybe it is just a normal routine annual exam. They're asking about that family history. They realize that there may be a little more than meets the eye here. And so we are getting more referrals from outside practitioners that are recognizing that this is something that's important. It's a discussion that needs to be, needs to be undertaken.